Bruh. Is that f***ing straight? I don't like to like cater to that. Oh, if he's mean to you, he likes you. Mm, no. Hello? Hi everybody, I'm Degenerate, and today we're going to be playing a new game, Broken Colors, as you can see. I saw this on Itch. It is inspired by Boyfriend to Death, which we know everyone loves. Oh. The warnings were just here, and I forgot what it was. Oh my- <gasps> Not funny. Um, but yes, it's obviously an 18 plus game. Let me- Okay. This horror game contains disturbing themes such as- Oh. <laughs> uh, so let's begin. It was inspired by Boyfriend to Death. I hope I said that already. When you came into this world, what name was given to you? All right. Ooh, first name. Oh, yes. This is just like a uh, first bite. We love that. And what pronouns do you use? Yep. Wonderful. Thank you. Let's see where your path will take you in this dark, unsteady world. Oh. They said there's cheap jump scares, apparently. Not a fan. Is that my closet? Why is it cracked open like that? I would never have that open. What is what is that sound? My outreached hand feels its way forward the source of the alarm until it finds the snooze button and the alert comes to a stop. Yeah, turn it off. Thank you. That's like the worst alarm sound. What? I yawn and roll my <laughs> roll on my side, curling up into a ball. I'm already snoring when it sounds again louder this time. I groan at the thought of leaving the comfort of my co cozy bed. All right, all right, I'm awake. Oh my god, please. Knowing that I would have to skip lunch if I wasted any more time now, I'll let out a defeated sigh and pull myself up into a sitting position to switch the alarm off. Finally. Okay. Quick save. No, I meant like actual save. What is this? Oh, this is the save. Great, put it here. Oh, we could delete saves. Yes. I love that. I remembered this time to save at the beginning. Okay, so first initial thoughts. That's a terrible, right? And then this. This whole closet thing happening. Why is it not closed all the way? I don't fucking know. Uh, I know that's gonna come into play at some point, so my eyes are gonna dart directly over there as soon as something happens. I put my phone back onto the bedstand, the bedside table, but as hard as I try to make it casual, it takes all my energy to swing my legs over the side without falling backward. Ugh. I stop moving and allow myself a few seconds to let the day come softly into focus. Even if I can hardly keep my eyes open, my whole body feels like it's been hit by a truck. Is that what they call fatigue syndrome? I swear it's been getting harder to fight it off every day. Putting my hands on either side of me, I grunt as I finally push myself off the bed completely. I feel my feet still ache from the previous day's work as I stumble towards my closet, wiping the sleep from my eyes and in an almost robotic fashion, Pull on a pair of shorts and a shirt. Whichever is conveniently resided at the top of the pile. Isn't that like a dirty clothes pile? The summer sun shines brightly through the grubby windows of my apartment, filling me with an, with more unnecessary warmth. I close my eyes and bring my arms back behind my head, stretching. Another yawn escapes my throat as I head to the kitchen, only to be faced with an almost empty fridge. Right. I had to get rid of most of my food after the last power outage. I decided to make myself a chicken salad sandwich and a mental note to do some grocery shopping tomorrow. Or maybe I should not only do it mentally, but also write it down later. Bruh. Is that f***ing straight? Yo, this dude follows me everywhere. I can't escape. I can't escape. 
The soft crackling sound under my chair reminds me of the dried leaves that had been shattered all over the scattered all over the floor by a strong draft the other day. And other sad results of my neglected mint plant. And mind you, accidentally killing it is not an easy task. Oh shoot, how could I forget to water you the whole time, poor thing? While I throw pity glances at it, I finish my lunch, then pick up some of the leaves, thinking about retrieving my plant reviving my plant later. The sink is right there, we could just water it now. Before rushing to get ready for another uneventful day at work. Where do we work? Oh, I stepped in. The sun is like beaming today. I wish I, I wish we had more trees throwing some shade in this part of the city or a new affordable entry. Yo. Man, I could grow a beard just waiting for you. The AC is broken. And I'm supposed to fix that? What's happening here? What are you gonna do about that? No way. <laughs> no way. Yep, that's Rasmus. Rasmus. That's a weird name. The spoiled, obnoxious son of the manager. Oh gosh. Whose favorite pastime is to constantly bully me. Unfortunately, I need the money and I can't afford to complain about it too much. Even though his father is pretty nice to me. Looks up for his cruel jokes about us marrying one day. Rasmus and I are anything but a perfect match, really. What? The... <laughs> in... Indigenant? At his re reproachful remark, I'm so sorry. I stand next to the table, rest my other free hand on my hip, and glare at him. I see the corner of his mouth curling up, and I realize he's not at the least bit intimidated by me. I wouldn't think so. How should I answer him? Call a technician? Why me? Do I look like a technician? Hello to you too, Raz. Um... I feel like, oh my gosh, let's do that one. Giving me attitude. He rolls, <laughs> he rolls with his eyes as I drink my juice in almost one gulp, followed by a grimace shooting across my face. Woohoo, brain freeze. No, you look like an idiot who keeps forgetting that I'm in charge here. Just do as you're told and fix the damn thing. Bro, what if I can't fix it? Then you can watch me walk out of here. There's no way in hell I'm <laughs> I'll stay here for hours to let my stuff being being cooked. This guy is like, why are you doing this? Oh my god, you're such a diva. What did you just say? I said you're a diva. <laughs> you heard me, there are other ways to cool off here. You should help help me if you want the, the AC to promptly work again. Supervising you? Sure, I can do that. No, I'm not asking for supervision. Well, we don't always get what we want. Your gratitude included. Now move. Oh, gosh. The mean one. Why is it so hard for him to help people? Is that... This is what I would like to ask him, but I bite my tongue and follow him quietly, frustrated with myself for letting him treat me like a dog, a, a damn doormat all the time. Fortunately, he has always been like that, bossy, condescending, even bitter about past events that may have been beyond his control. I noticed that he never speaks of his mom, but I figured... That might be a topic he doesn't want to, to discuss, so I never brought it up. Besides, I doubt trying to get to know him better would change anything about our current relationship. After changing into my work clothes and shutting off the power on the cooling system, I struggled with the removal of the thick ice layers and freed the coil from dirt and dust while Ram Rasmus was supervising me. I started whistling a song to drown out all of the all of his comments about me being clumsy and lacking any skill. Unfortunately, this was not a side most customers got to see. This is why nobody believed me. Whether I complained about the bullying, people would just laugh and tell me to go easy on me. Tell him to go easy on me, making him do the exact opposite. Once I'm done, I return to the break room with him to wipe the sweat off my face with a towel. 
and take a moment to rejoin, re-enjoy the cooler temperature. That's a job well done. Thanks. At least he can say thank you. I was talking to myself. He- wait! Whatever, I could have done- I could have been much quicker if you weren't all fingers and thumbs. What? Something's wrong with you. He glances at the clock on the on the wall, then back at me. Anyway, you better go back to the counter now. I'll check our inventory in the meantime. Great. You being in another room. That's amazing. Like, I'm actually serious about that. I'm not sarcastic. I just nod as he leaves, pouring myself another glass of juice before I follow him through the door. This is a great break room, by the way. It looks amazing. And place it down next to the cash register. There's still no customers, huh? Seems like it's gonna be a slow day. Depending on the season or day of the week, my job can be slow, hectic, stressful, or mind-numbingly boring and repetitive. It's also physically more demanding than some might think. Having to stand in one place all day is hard on my feet, knees, and back. I got it. <laughs> I enjoy my job though. Some of the most fun times involve, the involve chatting with regulars. We would laugh, catch up, tease each other. I probably know more about their lives than their neighbors or even relatives. Of course, we also have customers who treat me like I'm something nasty on the bottom of their shoe. A couple of them could ruin my whole day. Sadly, it is expected of me to debase my self-worth to avoid responding back in a similar manner. Which is stupid. Mila, one of our regulars, one of the regulars, isn't the type to say anything nice or look even remotely approachable. She usually just buys her cigarettes and leaves the store as fast as she can. Or came in. I remember how she got angry at me once for asking for her ID. It was scary as hell. And to this day, I don't know how I even survived her little out outbursts. It's understandable though. She doesn't look um, older um, or just a a an adult. But I like to think that she was just having a bad day and isn't the mean kind. Benny, another regular. It's pretty he is pretty quiet, and on some days he's a bit awkward. He always buys energy drinks and avoids eye contact when talking to me. I once pointed out how rude I thought this kind of behavior was. Now he occasionally makes an effort to show me that he pays attention. I admit I feel bad about it seeing how he really manages a smile. Makes me wonder how miserable his life must be. The other two well-known regulars are Gunther and Levy. Oh. Isn't much of a talker, but he's too polite to not engage in some small talk. At first, I was a bit intimidated by his height and bulky stature. The wrinkles and the dark half-moons below his eyes didn't help to make him look any less scarier. Yes, he does look scary, you are correct. Funnily enough, we both bonded later over our shared fear of dentists and love for cats. Oh my gosh, put that away! <laughs> this is a public space. I'm gonna say Levy, because Levy is... I don't know. Is just the kind of guy that gets you in a good mood. As soon as he walks into the store, he's always smiling, greeting and and ready to share the latest rumors with me. Me and Rasmus notice that a chemical smell clinging to him that makes it obvious he's dealing with drugs. It's so strange to think that some of our customers might be actual criminals. I don't think I will ever get used to the fact that I moved to a city with a high crime rate. Gang fights, robberies, assassinations, and other attacks are part of everyday life here for some people. Even our manager has trouble expanding his business without facing any ter territorial issues. It's crazy, really. Luckily, the neighborhood I live in has been quite peaceful for years. However, I'd be lying if I said I didn't wish for a little excitement every now and then to com combat my rather boring life. Yep, still no customers. My weary eyes wander to an open magazine that someone had left on the counter. I pick it up. Oh, wow. I can't help admiring the beautiful young woman on the cover, who looks vaguely familiar. I might have seen her around somewhere before, or just remembering seeing her in a different type of media. 
what? I'm not even gonna begin to guess. She must be a popular model or dancer. I wonder what I what it feels like to get noticed by someone like her. My lips twitch in self mockery. Yeah, dream on. Dream on. I finally break away from her charming smile and start flipping through the magazine until I get stuck on a page with a fun looking personality quiz. I guess I could take it to kill some time. Question one. You want to draw a landscape. What color do you choose? A landscape? Um, I don't know. Green? It's like a, right? Question two. You have been blindfolded for a special surprise day. What will you see when your blindfold comes off? Whatever the person chose. I, I mean, we're sitting on, how is, what? We're sitting on a roof terrace to have dinner under a starry night sky. Okay, one, burge it, so no. We're surrounded by a lush green meadow, having a picnic under a tree. We're standing on a pier at the beach and watch fireworks. Okay, now I don't like the beach, but that's because I don't like the ocean, but watching fireworks is something I do enjoy. You've received a gift that you can use to complement your overall style. You open the box and find silver necklace with a pearl pendant, paper straw hat, no, black leather collar, mm. a beaded bracelet with colorful patterns, a headband in your favorite color. Uh, the collar seems nice. Guys, get your minds out the gutters. What's the best snack for a movie night? Um, now I know people don't like this candy. Dots. I fucking love dots. Yeah. I love dots and Twizzlers. Chewy, gummy, gelatin candy. Best. Um, popcorn is like. <laughs> Come on now. Popcorn chips, anything like, you know? I like chips. My favorite right now is um, these Lay's, wavy Lay's, lightly salted. So good, oh my gosh. An independent pet. Oh wait, you want you want to get a pet. Which animal will suit you best? A cat. I have, I have a cat, I mean kitty. Menace. An independent pet that I can spend time with from the comfort of my home. Loyal pet, exotic pet. Oh, it's not an actual animal, it's just you know what? Yeah. Just independent. Oh my gosh! Why are you not in your work clothes? What are you doing? Don't start on me like that. Careful who you're yelling at. You yelled at me! If I was the manager, you'd be in big trouble now. As if you're not causing me enough trouble already. I mumble those words as my lips curl into a pout. My eyes fall on the glass that I accidentally knocked over. It's content drenching the entire magazine, making the answers harder to read now. Groaning, I duck down, grab a paper towel from a lower shelf, and use it to wipe the counter. Then I dab at the juice stains on every page. What's that? A personality quiz? Shouldn't you be in your work clothes? He snorts. Do you even have a personality you can speak of? Why are you so mean? What's going on? I don't like to like cater to that. Oh, if he's mean to you, he likes you. Mm, no. But it seems like this is what he's going for. As if <laughs> it's an option. I frown and glare at the quiz, instantly regretting having taken it at all. And you're still using a fountain pen, huh? How old-fashioned. I don't know why, but today he seems particularly annoying. I'm already so tired of having to listen to his voice. Tired of not being able to enjoy things in his, ple in his presence. And tired of him making me shrink each time his mocking gaze grazes me. And I'm not exaggerating here. He makes my skin crawl every time he laughs at something I've said or done. He's always laughing at me, as if we're one big joke. As if I were one big joke. 
and God knows what else he does behind my back. And yet every day for two years now, I throw the same hellish routine with him. I go through the same hellish routine with him. Why can't he stop doing that? It's like he wants to keep his iron grip around my neck and squeeze until my head finally pops off. I let out a small involuntary gasp when I see the torn page. Oh shit. I guess my dabs have been a little too aggressive and it has nothing to do with Ra Rasmus. Nope, not at all. Just throw it away already. You're not here to laser on anyway. There's plenty for you to do, even if we don't have any customers right now. Is that why you're bothering me? <laughs> Are you leaving? I look at the small backpack he has flung over his shoulder. Are you leaving now? Not that I'm complaining, I do need a break from him. But he knows as well as I do that we're not allowed to go to work alone anymore. You'll be fine on your own. And the manager agrees? He paused for a moment, pondering what to say. Not yet, but he will later. Borrow. If you say so. Don't miss me too much when I'm lounging in a hammock by the by the pool, sipping, sipping my cocktail. I don't care. You going to a pool party? That's so not fair. Quit whining and be grateful that I trust you enough with these keys. Make sure everything is locked and secure. You know the drill. I'll call you later. And to check up on you. At least he checks up on me. You see, the, 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 the subtle little... Things. I grumble to myself. Alright, take care. You see? Just... I still do the whole... Alright, take care. So there should be... Yeah. The store bell chimes as he pushes the door open, taking all the stress and tension I have felt for the last two hours with him. My reflection in the window brightens up as soon as I hear the roar of his motorbike, accompanied by a Latin summer song that is now playing from the store's ceiling speaker. As the sound of his engine fades to a distant rumble, I stretch my arms above my head and feel less like taut violin strings and hum softly to the song, finally some well-deserved peace and quiet. I just hope no one caused any serious trouble now that I'm alone. The headlines about gang raids targeting small shops are always on my mind when darkness falls across the city. I wonder if cashiers like me will soon have to be armed for emergencies like that. No, stop thinking about this. There's no point in feeding your anxiety now. Just follow the music and focus on your task. Although the- Uh oh? Are we technologically advanced? What's this? Although the AC is running smoothly now, my dry throat craves more cold liquid, so I leave the counter to refill my empty glass in the break room. I take a sticky magazine with me to throw it with all the other garbage into the containers at the staff entrance. As soon as I'm back inside, the nice music is interrupted by news reports of an unknown serial killer. Great. Approximately between July 3rd and August 11th, a serial killer murdered and dismembered a Colma district in Colma district. At least 12 victims, only three of which could be positively identified. 12 brutal killings in almost six weeks. And the police has neither clues nor suspects. We ask you to keep eyes and ears open and report any crimes, suspicious behavior, safety concerns, and medical emergencies. It is also recommended to not walk alone at night and to leave your workplace early to be home at a safer, reasonable time. This is awful. I can feel myself getting emotional as I imagine the grief of the grief the victims' families must be going through right now. As if these violent gangs wreaking havoc weren't enough, now there's someone out there who takes pleasure in killing innocent people who would do such a thing. A psychopath. And how can this killer be stopped? The authorities don't seem to know what they're doing either. This is just too much. I turn off the radio and when I hear another announcer begin to elaborate on the killer's methods. Why would you do that? <laughs> oh yeah, they cut off their limbs, they, they spread them across the street and like, bro. A chill runs down my spine as I look around the deserted shop, suddenly feeling very exposed here by myself. I shook my head trying to drive away the image images of my own death. I wonder if Rasmus has heard about this news as well. 
If he did, I don't think he would have left me here all by myself, wouldn't he? I don't even know if the Coma district is close to where I live. I never had time to fully explore the city after moving in. Oh, my train of thought breaks by the sudden arrival of customers, making me rush to the counter to the checkout. I only recognize one of them as a new regular. However, he's not what I would call profitable. Quite often, he just looks around and leaves without buying anything. Even Rasmus finds it odd and told me to keep a close eye on him. Though, whenever he notices my gaze, he seems to feel compelled to strike up a conversation with me. <laughs> like now. Hi. Hello. He fiddles with the hem of his shirt and has a hard time maintaining eye contact with me. A bit unusual, but for now, I'm glad I can talk to someone that isn't Rasmus. I'm gonna call him Raz. I put on my best smile and greet him cheerily. Hello, sir. It's nice to see you again. How can I help you with this on this beautiful day? That was a little much. It really is a beautiful day, isn't it? That's new. I know I never introduced myself to him, so I guess he must have overheard my first name somewhere. And really hot, too. I hope you keep yourself hydrated. He's trying really hard to make small talk with me, isn't he? But I'm in no mood to talk about something as boring as the weather. We're the one who initiated it, so it's like, it's gonna happen. So I try to steer him back on topic. What brings you here today? I wanted to ask you, do you know, maybe we could, I mean, I would like to spit it out. His shoulders sag as he utters a frustrated sigh. <laughs> That's not how I practiced it. Maybe I should, no. Sir, is everything all right? <laughs> this guy's funny. He chuckles. I'm such a coward. Aww. Dang. And I wanted to see him finish. Hey, yo! Not like- Oh my god, why did I word it like that? I kind of wanted to finish talking to him. Why did I say it like that? I couldn't understand his mumbling, but before I can even ask him to repeat what he said, he turns on his heel and leaves the store. Well, that was weird. I'm baffled for several minutes, but decide that I should focus on the other customers instead. I'll blame myself for his sudden escape like I usually do. I've never seen him so shy and awkward before. He didn't even ask about our products, but I'm sure he'll return, most likely tomorrow. After all, everyone can have a bad day. As if on cue, my gaze wanders back to the window as night falls, and I'm once again enveloped by loneliness. There's not much time left before my shift is over. What else can I do to shorten the waiting time? Take a call? Is my phone ringing? Okay. Who, what, who would I call? I haven't said anything about, oh, having friends or anything. So, let's daydream. That's always nice. Lost in thought, I drum my fingers on the counter. All of a sudden, memory starts playing in my head like a movie. I see my friends from middle school who gifted me a drum set for my 15th birthday and taught me how to play. Like most teenagers, we were chasing the dream of becoming a world-famous band, and indeed, with the help of our families, we soon had all of our own instruments and a soundproof basement to practice in. Feeling nostalgic, I take two candy, co candy canes from a box that are sold year-round and start hitting on various items to create some funny beats. I've been told that I was a good listener. And had a good sense of rhythm and timing, so teenage me practiced for years to become one of the best drummers one day. Every night I would fall asleep listening to my favorite bands, imagining this was our first concert. Turning I was playing and crying tears of joy at the end. Well, like so many other things, our lives, these dreams didn't last. Oh my gosh. I gasped at the candy cane as the candy cane oh. I gasped and the candy canes dropped to the floor. Oh, you startled me. How did I not notice him? And why didn't I hear the doorbell? Have I been that deep in thought? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No, nah, it's alright. I, I should have paid more attention. It's part of my job, after all. Though I didn't expect to have another customer right before closing time, either. My laugh comes out awkward and straggled. I'm so embarrassed you see me like this. I usually shop at a different store, but only found 
out today that they had to shut down. That's why I came here instead. I'm sorry for any inconvenience I'm causing, you know. Oh, don't worry about it. You're causing- you're not causing any inconvenience at all. It's a convenience store after all. You know, I really enjoyed your performance watching you cheered me up a little. Having a bad day? I wouldn't want to repeat it though. Thank you, I'm glad you did. Let's ask. Sounds like you're pretty dejected about something. Is that a heavy sigh? Yeah. I was rejected by a person I really liked. I thought I did everything right this time. I don't know what to do anymore. Aww. I'm we That happened to you. Sounds like the worst day ever. Sorry you got rejected. I know how painful that can be. Do I? I'm kidding. I, I, I do. <laughs> Smile blooms on his lips. Uncertain and shaky, but accepting my sympathy. Thanks for being so understanding. It actually makes me feel a little better. Just having someone say something nice to me today. You're welcome. I'm sure you'll get another chance to meet someone who hopefully will appreciate you for who you are. And I bet there's a lot to appreciate. Oh my gosh. I wink at him and give him a bright smile. What can I say? He's a new potential customer. So I gotta give it my all. Besides, I do like cheering people up. Yeah, but you know, some people, they'll take it like that. Like, come on. I don't want anyone to feel like nobody cares about them. You really think so? Like what? I, I wouldn't know! My eyes quickly scan him from head to toe. His hair looks fluffy. His clothes are worn out, but clean. And he smells nice, too. Like some sort of homemade oil. Maybe rose? Rosé? It reminds me of my mother and her expensive shampoo and soap. Appearance-wise, I like how fluffy your hair looks and... Wait, are you wearing a coat in summer? You must be sweating terribly underneath. He chuckles. No, I don't sweat that much, actually. I like hot weather and the warm, cozy feeling of my coat. Sure. It's like a safety blanket. It protects my skin from the harsh sun. And I don't have to freeze in places where some air conditioners get way too cold. Interesting. I've never looked at it that way before. But I could never wear a coat in summer. I die the moment I see squirrels pick up nuts with hot holders. Oh, with pot holders. What? His face crinkles in laughter. It's a sweet, soft laugh that I find surprisingly cute. I shyly rub my neck as I get the sudden fluttery feeling in my chest before I notice the two candy canes lying between my feet. Unbroken and still wrapped in their plastic packaging. I pick them up and show them to him. Here, you can have these. I know this sounds kind of cheesy, but since they didn't break, you could use them as a lucky charm. You know, for your next conquest. My fingers brush against each other as I hand them- I hand him the candies, causing him to hold his breath for a split second. He must have felt the same heated spark jolt from our brief touch. I watch him staring at his gift in awe, then back at me. It's a new peppermint variety filled with ruby chocolate okay i'm not a fan of peppermint that's nasty they're so popular that they always sell out quickly not only at christmas thank you you're too kind this is this really makes me feel so much better already i beam at him oh don't mention it i'm always glad to help well then not wanting to keep him any longer from paying for his purchase i started scanning his items is that all? Uh, oh, right, yeah, that's it. While I bag his groceries, I notice how he's watching me closely now. But that doesn't bother me. It's cute when customers admire me for making their day. It makes me feel better about myself, too. Here you go. Thank you, it was really nice talking to you. Likewise. Um, please be careful at this hour. You never know who's lurking in the shadows. I'll be extra careful just for you. But take care too, right? Thank you for your purchase and please come again. Oh, I definitely will. And that's it. That's all it takes. Just giving customer great customer service. Because I think we're going a little overboard with it. Definitely. 
Because ain't nobody is that like happy to talk to customers. No. And with that, he leaves the store. I wave him goodbye, happy to finally be able to enjoy the end of my workday. We might as well. Hello? He walks out of the store with a spring to his step as the darkness of the night settles over the city like a cloak whose lights then comes to life showing the beauty of its rainbow colors it's been so long that someone other than his friend has been kind to him offering him hope of a new sense of warmth to blossom in his heart he has been starving for such sweetness always clinging to any emotional sugar source he could find but it's never easy nor does it last very long every time things didn't work out people were quick to move on eventually if they were lucky that is this time would be different though he could feel it it's you or no one your precious gift is a sign of love right um it makes me it makes him want to capture every single moment of you moments when you're real beautiful even scared there's no way you wouldn't want to be his soulmate his life partner his companion and share all of your secrets all of your hopes and fears your sorrows and joys with him forever okay <laughs> did you like <laughs> despite despite the warm humid air he could feel goosebumps appearing on his arms making his mouth split into a grin as he enjoyed the thought that you might be thinking of him too. He will return your kindness and make sure you know how much he cares about you. Even if it takes all he has to give, he will do anything necessary to make it happen. Anything. If sacrifices aren't made for love, it ain't love, right? And he won't stop until you're s you s understand how much you mean to him, even if you're if you even if you've only just met. He will know everything there is to know about you by the time this night is over. Anyway, just be patient, my love. It won't be long until you find yourself in my arms, just like it's meant to be. I was about to say we should just like hang out in the the break room until the next day because it's probably dangerous to go out at night and then he does that so i have a sneaking feeling that the last person that he confessed his love to is probably no longer with us yeah i'm gonna say yes i slam the cash register shut lower the shutter doors and activate the alarm system well, the new customer still lingers. The new customer still lingers on my mind. I should have asked for his name. Well, maybe we'll, I'll get the chance next time. He seems to have a gentle soul. I can't remember the last time I met someone who was so pleasant and easy to talk to. A small smile creeps onto my lips as I think back to how our hands touched. Not the first time I've been a target to a customer, but usually it's just silly little crushes. Nothing that would last. It's a nice feeling to have them. Even if they don't lead anywhere. As I make my way home, I suddenly hear my phone ringing. I fish out. I fish it out of my bag and squint at the bright screen lighting up my face, displaying Erasmus' full name, dipshit, poopoo head. Lint liquor? Dipshit. I laugh at the nickname. I will just start one at that. But I do really want to talk to this mom. But do I really want to talk to this mom right now? Sure. I, l I took the call and I couldn't tell by his colorful, bouncy voice. I oh, he's drunk. And could tell by his colorful, bouncy voice that he was buzzed on alcohol. The party noise in the background made it difficult to hear him, but fortunately, he was short with 
it with me. I confirmed that everything was fine, that I was heading home, and he had nothing to worry about. We said goodbye, and shortly afterwards, I stumbled into my apartment, kicked my shoes off, and meandered over to my laptop to check my emails and social media. I keep my passwords and other valuable information in an old diary with a sturdy lock attached to it. The lock... Okay. The lock and its key have mismatched colors and are kept separately. This way hackers are less likely to bug me and any burglar will have to find the key first or have the right tool to break the lock. Not that a burglar would ever be interested in a diary. But you never know. I glance through the ads in my inbox and make notes of all the good deals that interest me. After that, I log into my account on Clickbay and search for the newest post of my family. It's my only way to keep track of the events in their lives without having to directly contact them. I don't know if I'll be able to explain this to anyone. My life is not exactly what I thought it would be. Not what I promised back then. I feel too ashamed to ever look them in the eye again. Of course, part of me thinks that I'm just being ridiculous, but the guilt eating me up inside always wins and prevents me from reaching out to them. I want to know if they still s think of me, think about me, but if they do, it's not on social media. I scroll through posts that are only about new recipes, celebrity crushes, pictures of food, and nature trips. I don't know why I keep tormenting myself like that every night. Because you deserve it. Whoa! For what? What did I do? Looking at their happy faces only makes me feel lonelier and more like an outsider. I know I should stop, but I can't. It's like I'm addicted to this type of misery. I turn to my mint plant, the only non-artificial one in this room. The one- the way it looks is the way I feel right now, withered and forgotten. But you don't deserve it, do you? You deserve to thrive and to be cared for. Unlike you. Um, I'm not appreciating this. I gently caress its brown and crispy leaves. Alright, time to revive you. I get my garden scissors and start cutting off all the dead material. It's kind of fun. I wish it was just as easy for me to make a fresh start. A fresh start so you can fail all over again? Oh, I'm tired of this. The roots seem healthy enough, so all that's left to do now is to keep them- Okay. W watered every day. I'm sure I'll manage this time. I have to do- I have to if I want to be proud of at least one thing in my life. It's not like your pitiful pride would be overshadowed by people who actually accomplish something. Alright. Because the screen is also getting darker. I'm, s I'm noticing. Just shut up. I hate this so much when my brain is working against me. Okay, it's gone. I'm trying my best, okay? I'm trying my best. Oh my gosh, this is hitting way too close to home. My eyes grow heavy. I don't feel like stripping down to my underwear, but I know how hot it can get at night, so I do it anyway. Gotta make sure that closet door's open, uh, closed. I'll leave the cut stems on the floor, since I don't care about them right now. I can clean it up tomorrow. All I want to do is fall to my cushion, into my cushion and stretch my body over the entire bed, until its soothing comfort takes away the pain of my sore muscles. I close my eyes, slowly dozing off to the quiet, whirling sound of my laptop, which I'm sure will go in sleep mode too. My mind sends me to dreamland, where it's already making plans for my up upcoming day off. I could go for a nice walk in the park, feed the ducks, and have a picnic. Hello? I take a deep breath, smell- I was hoping to just wake up the next morning and then end the video for today. I take a deep breath, smelling the fresh air with its sweet fragrance coming from the blooming flowers sprinkling the lush green meadows that cover most of the park, except for some bare spots. 
Hello? I walk towards a giant tree that watches over everything and everyone. Its shadow cools my skin as I sit down to keep him on his feathered dweller's company. To keep him in his feathered dweller's company. Alright. One picture's enough. Honestly, if you're gonna do it non-consensually, you might- just one. It's early in the morning, so the only people passing by are those who jog or walk their dogs. Uh, can you st I lie down and smile when a sudden warm breeze drifts through the treetop, finding its way over to me, caressing my hair like a spirit using its fingertips. I wish I could stay here forever. Oh my gosh. Because it's starting to get annoying. Because it's way too many pictures. Let's get this done. Please go away. And now someone's tapping away at my computer. That's amazing. Are you serious? He looks at your screen with a sparkle in his eyes. Tracing a heart with his finger on your name. So your name is D. Seems like I found a new favorite word. Shut the fu- uh... He happily but quietly repeats your name over and over like an incantation. He's a witch. Such a lovely name. I use it with utmost pleasure tonight. Mmm. Mmm. Don't. Don't do that, please. I beg of you. <laughs> Anything but that. Just please. It doesn't help that my f mic is red. Like, I. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Mm mm. Mm mm. What is that? That means so many things. That could mean so many things. Ah, ah. A nervous energy builds in his chest as he thinks back to his first con conversation with you and how gentle your eyes were when you smiled at him. A smile that made everything better. Ah, you captivate him like no other, making him feel like things are finally starting to make sense. Ah, ah. His face lights up like a neon sign as he slowly turns to you. Your dreams of the rosebud. See you very soon. Please get out of my apartment. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for playing our demo. Ah. Oh my gosh. That was, that was like... I have nothing constructive to say. Because I thought it was actually pretty good. Um. Yeah, like, nothing is in inherently wrong with this it's pretty good we have a save system which is that's normal in games like this or just games in general you know you're supposed to have a save system i'm gonna be salty about it of course of course because every game should have a save system there should not be like it just doesn't make sense i'm guessing that the the personality quiz is what um leads you to whoever you see or even then i think he i think he pops up either way but uh yeah that was broken colors it was pretty good not gonna lie it's inspired by boyfriend of death so that's why you saw a straight poster uh but yeah that was actually pretty good but yes that was broken colors if you guys enjoyed that you know you guys know what to do like comment subscribe and I will see you guys next time.